Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's Foundation Friday for Over 50s, we are going to be taking a look at a new powder foundation from Makeup Forever. It's their Matte Velvet Skin Blurring Foundation. It retails for $38 for 11 grams of powder and it comes in 30 shades. Now according to Makeup Forever, this is supposed to be a full coverage blurring powder foundation with a lifelike matte finish. I really hope it's going to be lifelike. Um, that blends and breathes with skin for 12 hour wear that never cakes, flakes, or fades. They also say it's going to visibly reduce pores and absorb oil for a balanced natural look. They didn't say which skin types this is supposed to be best for, but I'm assuming since it's oil absorbing that it's more for normal to combo to oily skin people, which I am. I am a mature <laughs> a YouTuber here. I'm days away from my 57th birthday so i test these things on more mature less than perfect skin but my skin is not the typical mature woman's skin which tends to be dry i still have combo skin i have slight oiliness in my t-zone but i'm dry around my mouth area and normal for the rest of my face so this potentially should work well for me and i do like a matte velvet finish and I do like a powder foundation, so I have high hopes for this for today. It comes in this travel-friendly sleek metal compact. Doesn't take up a lot of space on your vanity or in your makeup drawer. It's got a nice mirror in there. This is the powder foundation, and it's got a sponge. You can use the black side for fuller coverage, and you can use the white side for sheerer coverage. All right, taking a look at the ingredients on this one, I gotta say I wasn't terribly impressed with the ingredient list. The first ingredient is talc, then there is a mineral-based bulking agent, then silica, then dimethicone, petrolatum. So looking at the swatches now, the two shades that I picked it up in are Y305, which is the shade that I'm wearing today, and there's also Y345, which is the darker shade. In using that, I found it to be a little bit too dark a little bit too on the warm orangey side for my skin tone. All right, so let's look at the three days prior that I wore it and we will see how it wears on more mature, less than perfect skin. For day one, I had on my standard sunscreen combo, which is the Elta MD UV Elements mixed with a little bit of Paula's Choice Super Light sunscreen. I didn't use a primer with it because I like to test just the foundation to see how it does without any helpers. And I used the sponge that was included and I was using the shade Y345. Makeup Forever recommends using the white side of the sponge with longer strokes for sheerer coverage and the black side of the sponge with short strokes for fuller coverage. I really didn't find that using longer strokes blended the foundation very well. It would kind of just all go on where you first touched and then not really drag out to blend. And then I ended up evening it out using the black side of the sponge. I think I like the black side of the sponge better of the two and using the short stroke method rather than the long dragging method. Uh, most powder foundations that I've used before have some hydrating ingredients in them and they tend to go on feeling a little bit more creamy, not feeling like they're sucking all the moisture out of my skin. And this one, the second I put it on, I felt like my face just felt so dry, like it was really pulling the moisture out of my skin. And the color I don't feel like is quite right for me, but aside from those two things, I felt like the color payout and the opacity on it was pretty good. I didn't apply it to full, full coverage, but it is fairly medium high full coverage and there is just a little bit of redness showing through so I like the coverage and the color payout on it quite a lot on the first use. True to its name the finish is very matte and very velvety and I like that a lot about it. I felt like it definitely was smoothing on my pores so I ran some errands that day. It was a pretty hot day. I sat outside and had lunch for about an hour. I noticed that it started becoming luminous after about an hour or two so that at the six hour mark it was pretty darn luminous in my t-zone. The smoothing effect is very much diminished with the luminosity, but the color and coverage were still in place and from a wear standpoint, it was still looking good. It was still giving me the coverage. It had just become more luminous and now wasn't disguising my pores. So kind of a 50-50 on that. This one, remember, was also supposed to be oil controlling. So it definitely was not oil controlling. My oils were breaking through, you could see, in the T-zone. Once my oil started coming through, it didn't continue to feel drying on my skin. So that was good. And I gotta say at the six hour mark, I wasn't really minding it because it was still in place. The coverage was still there 
the color payout was still on my skin and so I felt that even though it was a little bit more luminous and I was sacrificing some of the smoothing I thought it looked a little bit more natural a little bit more youthful a little bit more glowy and I kind of liked the way it looked so at the 10 hour check-in it had gotten even more shiny than at six and so it was definitely accentuating texture by that point but it was still mainly in place so the wear was mainly good the 12 hours of wear that they promised uh, seems within reach with this and the other problem with it was that it did settle into wrinkles about three quarters of the way through the day so kind of later in the day I didn't notice it settling into wrinkles earlier on but I did notice it at the end of the day for day two, I switched up the sunscreen. I used my Make Prem sunscreen, which is another one of my favorites. I decided to use two different primers just to see if I could get more oil control, get the pores to be even smoother. So on one side of my face, I used Hello Fab Primer, and on the other side, I used Estee Lauder The Smoother. I applied the foundation with an IT Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe brush, and I used the same shade, Y345, as the day before. Using the IT Cosmetics brush, the foundation goes on much much sheerer than it did with either side of the sponge and where this sunscreen tends to leave a slight white cast on my face I felt like the color in the foundation didn't really cover it as much because it was so much sheerer it just wasn't blending well everywhere it wasn't easy to blend it took a lot more work to blend it out and get the coverage with this brush I feel like the primers made it look really, really matte, and so I added a spritz of the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray to help to give it more of a skin-like look. With the rest of my makeup done, I thought it looked really nice. I thought my skin looked smooth and natural. So I definitely liked it better applying it with this brush. At the five hour check-in, it was more worn off than the day before, but of course we have to remember that it went on much, much sheerer and I didn't have the same coverage, but I did like the look of it better at a more natural finish. The Estee Lauder side kept it from getting luminous, so it looked more matte and smoothing on that side than on the Hello Fab side. So at the 10 hour check-in, I felt like it was much more worn off than it had been the day before when I used it at full coverage. I could see the redness around my nose, chin, and cheeks showing through. I feel like the primers were keeping it looking more matte. It definitely wasn't as shiny and as textury in my T-zone than it had been the day before. All right, so today's like the 10th time I'm wearing it. I'm still on the fence about it. I keep hoping to like hit on something that will just knock it out of the park for me because I do really like it when I first apply it, but later in the day, I'm generally not loving it. So today I tried it with one last primer just to see. I used the Revlon Color Stay Prep and Protect Primer Base. I applied the foundation with the black side of the sponge in these short strokes to get the fuller coverage, and I switched to the shade Y305. I definitely like shade Y305 better. I think that it's a much better match for me. Right, today I wanted to hit it with a little Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. See if that helps. Mm, love this stuff. Oh my God, it is so good, so lightweight. All right, so there's the finished makeup look for today. So I think it looks nice. Like it's such a nice looking foundation when I first apply it. I just went outside, I did the sunshine test, I did the kitchen test, I did a natural window light test. So let me bring those in for you now. Out in the bright sunshine, I feel like it looks pretty powdery. It looks pretty cakey. It's definitely clinging to like every little tiny hair on my face. I feel like you can really see my texture out in the bright sunshine. And looking at it in the kitchen light, I think it looks pretty good in the kitchen actually. Even zoomed in nice up and close, I think it looks okay. It's not the most natural looking makeup I've ever seen, but it's not bad. And looking at it in front of natural window light, I actually think it looks good there too. That's actually probably the best light for me is the nice soft diffused light of the window. All right, so we have a couple more tests to do. We have the phone test. So here is the nice shiny clean phone glass. So I'm just gonna hold it up to my face for a minute here. You know, we're having a heat wave here in Massachusetts, so it's gonna be like 99 degrees again today. I have some errands to run. I need like, stuff for the pool, and I don't even know what. I have to go to the grocery store. So I'll be out in the heat, so I'll let you know if this gets luminous again throughout the day. All right, let's take a look at the phone glass. Wow, oh my gosh. Is that one of the first ones to pass the phone test? 
holy cow. All right, you guys, if you are a stickler for makeup not transferring to your phone glass, this is like only one of the second ones. The first one was the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet, which I don't know if you guys have heard, it's being discontinued, but it may be back in its original state, just in different packaging. That's what I've heard. So, or it may be reformulated, in which case we're all going to be in crisis mode. All right, let's go ahead and do the flash test. Let me get out my camera here. Is it giving flashback? I feel like it might even be giving flashback for something with no sunscreen in it. I feel like my face looks way whiter. All right, here's the picture from the darkened room. I just don't think it looks very flattering. I don't think it's doing anything for my skin. All right, hey you guys, just wanted to do a little check-in on the makeup. It is five hours later. It's now 6.20 p.m. I finished recording at about 1.30. I had some lunch. My air conditioning was broken. I had an air conditioner man over. I went to an appointment. It rained. It dropped 20 degrees and now it's like 70 degrees and my air conditioning's fixed and my house is freezing so I'm bundled up in a sweater. But I wanted to check in on the makeup and uh, show you what it's looking like now after five hours today using the Revlon primer. I actually kind of like how it looks today. I mean, this is definitely a foundation that I like how it looks from a distance, you know, but I'm not 100% convinced that it looks great up close, but I feel like it definitely, you know, evens out the skin tone, makes everything look really good. Um, I feel confident when I see myself like in a mirror um, when I'm wearing it. So, you know, it's not that bad but i did notice when i was watching back some of the other footage from the other days that i didn't really get a good shot of where it settles in the wrinkles so i just want to show it to you up close today so that you can get a real feel for what this looks like on your skin and then you can decide if it's something you want to wear or not you know that's how i do these reviews i never want to tell you like oh my god this is perfect you have to buy it i show you how it looks on my skin and then you decide if it's a look you like and then you decide if you want to get it based on that so Let's take a look at it nice, up close, and personal. So again, this would be like the equivalent of a five-hour check-in. It definitely has gotten more luminous, you know, in a couple of areas than it was in the beginning when it was really super matte. But I feel like with this primer, it's really not accentuating texture that much. But where it's settling into wrinkles most is like right down around here. It's kind of a little bit cracked on the surface. Of course, you can only see that if I zoom you in way up close. So let's do that because, you know, I love to zoom you guys in. So let's go. There we go. Focus here. You see those like little micro cracks on there and then how it settled in my little wrinkles over there. It did settle a little bit right in these little wrinkles over here. All right, you guys, after seven, 10, how many days of wear on this? I'm ready to run down the pros and cons. So on the pro side, we have that it has a lovely matte velvet finish. It's easy to apply. It's got buildable coverage. It does have a pore smoothing effect to start and it's got good color payout and it's got good wear. On the con side are that I found it to feel drying when I first put it on. It can look heavy and cakey when used at full coverage. It doesn't control oil. It gets shiny and luminous throughout the day, which then causes it to accentuate your texture rather than disguising your pores. It settles into wrinkles. The verdict on this one is that I kind of like it for the first couple of hours, but overall I didn't like it enough to recommend it, especially for more more mature people who have dry skin, I would definitely stay away from this one. So it's just meh, it's just okay. So another one for the ever increasing list of just okay foundations for mature skin. So if you want to see where it falls on the running list of all the foundations that I've tried, that is over on my blog. I'll put a link to that in the information box below the video. If you're looking for a specific foundation, I would check that list first because chances are I've probably reviewed it already and that also has links to the reviews so you can check it out. I don't currently have a favorite powder foundation. I was hoping that this would be the one, but clearly it isn't. The next powder foundation I'd like to try is this one by P. 
Pure. It's their four-in-one pressed mineral powder. So I've got that one queued up to go. Let me know what other Foundation Fridays you're looking for in the near future and I'll get on those. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the review and found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.